Hello, my name is Donald Crilly, and I'm from the London Business School. In the paper, Time and Space in Strategy Discourse, I show two ways of framing the future, and I explain why they matter for strategy. Let's imagine a meeting arranged for next Wednesday is moved forward two days. What day is the meeting now that it has been rescheduled? There are two almost equally common answers, Monday and Friday. Why? Well, we as humans are hardwired to think about the future in terms of motion. We can describe an event approaching, in which case the future moves towards us, or we can describe ourselves as heading towards an event, in which case we move towards the future. Monday responses interpret that question about the meeting through a time-moving lens. The future moves towards us, so the meeting is moved from Wednesday to Monday. Friday responses interpret the same question through an ego-moving lens. The meeting is postponed because you're moving through time, so the meeting is displaced two days ahead of you from Wednesday to Friday. Now, both frames are common in strategy discourse, but the question is, do they have any influence on how executives weigh the short-term expediency and the long-term consequences of their decisions? Well, three studies in this paper suggest so. The first study is an analysis of calls that take place between executives and financial analysts. There are two interesting findings. The first is that executives are much more likely to use time-moving frames to describe events in the distant future, between one and ten years hence. They use ego-moving frames to describe events that will take place very soon. The second finding is that executives from those firms that invest the most in research and development are the most likely to use time-moving frames. So maybe these are the executives who take the future most seriously. And this makes sense because in the time-moving frame, the future looms large. That's to say its advent is inevitable. We may take it seriously. The second study is a survey of managers. I asked them the exact same question about the ambiguous meeting date. Now, what did their Monday and Friday answers mean for their subsequent decision making? Well, I also measured their discount rates. I asked them how much money would you need at various points of time in the future in place of $1,000 tomorrow. And the results are striking. Across all time periods, executives who answered Friday, i.e. who were using the ego-moving frame in interpreting that question, required higher sums of money in place of $1,000 tomorrow. What does this imply? Well, it implies that the eagle moving frame is associated with impatience and a strong focus on short-term results over long-term consequences. The third study tries to unpack some of these relation causal relationships. And in order to do so, I prime participants in a corporate strategy program to employ either the time moving frame or the eagle moving frame. I give them a decision scenario about an acquisition. Their shown financial data indicate that this acquisition will be highly disruptive in the short term, leading the firm to, meet, to miss its short term financial goals, but with the potential to achieve higher income over more distant periods in the long term. Now, those who were primed to employ the time moving frame were more likely to approve the acquisition, but under one important proviso. And that was that they had an internal locus of control. An internal locus means that you believe that you have the capacity to influence future performance, future results. But not everything is simply down to chance or the external environment. Why is this important? It's important because in the time moving frame, the central actor is viewed as relatively passive. He or she is simply waiting for these future events to occur. So the overall finding from this study then is that taking long-term investments requires both a sense of the inevitability of the future, yes, it will come, but also a sense of confidence that we can shape future results, future returns. 
So in short, driving long-term oriented decision-making requires both a sense of the inevitability that the future will arrive, but also a sense that it's not overly fatalistic, that we can do something to shape future returns. If this presentation has piqued your interest in the paper, please read it in the SMJ. Also, feel free to send me an email. I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you.